from Gleek to Reek. Nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Abria Iyengar. <laughs> <laughs> we have Talis and Jaffe. <laughs> and Brennan Lee Mulligan. Hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We are here to play Um Actually. Um, Brennan, of course, you've played before. Uh, we've seen you many times. But we have uh, Abria and Talison joining us for the very first time. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so excited. If you out there are also joining us for the very first time and you don't know how this game works, it's very simple. I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about all kinds of nerdy shit. And it's up to these folks here to correct me. You must proceed your corrections with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't, I won't give you the point. And you can interrupt me whenever you want. So if you spot what's wrong, you can jump right in there. Y'all ready to play? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. All right. Here is our first statement. George Orwell's 1984 begins at noon on a bright cold day in April in what was once Great Britain, but is now known as Airstrip One. The world has been divided into three super states, Oceania, Eurasia, and East Asia, and the disputed area they constantly war over. Mm. Um, ooh, Brennan and Abria both buzzing in very quick, but Brennan <gasps> is first. Um, actually, there is no dispute, the disputed area is not outside of those three super states. The three super states do sum up to the totality of the world and switch who they're at war with. So it's two of them are at war while a third is not. Um, that's not what we're looking for. There's sort of like a lack of clarity about like exactly what the disputed air territory is, but in at least some interpretations, it maybe includes land that is just sort of like, we don't know what this is. Um, uh, so that's not what we're looking for. Abria. Um, actually, uh, it's, it's not, it's not April. Uh, that is incorrect. That is oh, not shoot. correct. Uh, Talison. It's been so long. Uh, um, Actually, East Asia isn't part of the book. East Asia is one of the super states. Can I just take one more dumb guess? I, I, will, I defer my point if this is correct. Is this some dumb fucking sci-fi thing where George Orwell is like, the word April brought too much joy to the people and it became, <laughs> the month became Vector 7 in the 30th day. That's a really good guess. You, you have the right vibe, but you have the wrong specific. I say it begins at noon, but it begins with the clock striking 13 uh, to give you like a very oh, like unwieldy sort of sense of like, it. things are wrong oh, here. Oh, Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that shit in the haunted mansion Gross. where it fucking belongs. Don't a lot of European people actually just keep their time that way? <laughs> On the clock itself, there is no 13, which does sort of imply that they've added two more hours to the day. Like, I guess just to be like a little bit creepy. Did anyone see that incredible TikTok of the comedian? There was like a young guy who was like, I invented the yes. clock. And he's like, so the clock has 12 hours. And it's like, oh, so there's 12 hours in a day. He's like, no, there's 24. And the guy's like, what? And he's like, but the, okay, so the day starts at one. And he's like, no, it starts at 12. The small hand counts the big Bigger time and the and big the hand big counts, counts the smaller the increment. And then there's another one. <laughs> and then he's like, and the day starts at night. And it's yeah. like, okay, man, good job on your clock. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I gotta, I gotta discover TikTok. At oh, some point, get in apparently. here! It's such a good, it's a beautiful place. I'm, I'm over forty. I'm worried. <laughs> Not another. I don't know if I'm ready for another app. I, I honestly, I feel the same. Like being in like the internet trenches for the past decade, where it's like, 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 like living and working on the internet, and just like seeing like social media platforms rise and fall, and then like a new one coming up. And it's just like. TikTok, you give it five years, you'll be fucking dead. And some hot new thing is gonna come up and it's gonna take your place. Like, I'm not gonna invest this emotional energy in you. <laughs> no points for that one, but we'll move right along. Move right along to our next one. The Creature from the Black Lagoon is a 3D monster movie from the 1950s. It tells the story of a team of geologists in the Amazon who are being stalked and killed by an amphibious gill man. In the end, they kill the creature by shooting it repeatedly. Uh, Taliesin. Um, actually, they weren't geologists. They were biologists, if I recall. They were, in fact, geologists, yeah. It was just sort of like, oh, shit, there's a thing here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were looking for rocks, and there's a fucking thing. They went to the most plant-choked area of the planet to look for rocks? <laughs> Who put all these plants on my rocks? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 
That's why it's a good discovery, Brendan, because no one's bothered to look at the rocks before no in the Amazon. No one looks under plants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dig down the universal back lot. What is this? <laughs> uh, Brennan, so uh, do you have an answer? Um, actually, they do not defeat the creature by shooting it. I am going to say you are close enough there. Uh, they, uh, what I was specifically looking for is that they do not kill the creature. They do shoot the hell out of it at the mm. end, um, but oh, they don't actually kill it. The right. creature comes back for two more sequels. Yeah, um, he's, he gets like uh, a girlfriend, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, he goes full Shape of Water. Guillermo del Toro has said that the inspiration for Shape of Water was like, what if that relationship had worked out? Was sort of like yeah. where where he started from is, there. Is that the only hot fish man that wasn't played by Doug Jones so far? By the way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, <laughs> like I, I used, I had a friend who had a sliding scale of all the hot fish people, uh, and they were how many are there? Jones, whatever, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got Abe Sapien, you got the the Shape of Water uh, fish man, yeah, you have from the Black more. Lagoon, original creature another? from the Black Lagoon, Free Willy if you're nasty. <laughs> Look, I'm a monster fucker, and that means whatever I decide it means. Is Free Willy, I guess Free Willy is kind of a King Kong vibe, I guess. But yeah, like, that yeah, went, yeah, the leap over at the end. Oh, that yeah. did something to a lot of people in <laughs> Was my that an awakening for a generation? That like I a little bit, like, huh. Huh, what does All this the, mean? Everyone has their animated Robin Hood, I guess. I, I think yeah. I had like, yeah, I had like way less whimsy as a child than other people because I, when I saw the whale go over the kid, I was like, unsafe, get on <laughs> under the whale. <laughs> Cheer on your whale friend from a safe distance. <laughs> well, Brennan, you'll claim that point and we'll move on to our next right. statement Ooh. here. <laughs> Danny the Street is a DC superhero first appearing in Doom Patrol. Once just a typical teen living on the street, Danny gains the ability to teleport and even the power to create objects and people through thought alone. Uh, Talison is buzzed in. Um, actually, Danny has always been a street. Thank that you. is correct. Danny is a, a sentient street Don't mess with Danny. Uh, who has always been a street and has never been a human. Danny's the best. I'm a big Doom Patrol fan. That's a that's oh, a yeah. wild. You said Danny the Street, I'm like, ready. Yeah. I'm only passingly familiar with Danny the Street. What I know basically was like from the research that I that I did while crafting this question. Um, uh, is there uh, one of the if, first queer if, characters in in the DC comics? Danny expressed their gender through having these really masculine like guns and ammo shops, but it was all frilly lace and extremely and extremely like like feminine 1950s Americana, but like the street itself had like some real sharp edges inside of it. It was yes. great. I love Danny. The, the two yeah. genders, gun shops yeah. and doors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of godlike superheroes, obviously, but it's like this is God in the sort of like Christian sense of the word. It's just like Danny is everywhere. Danny can do anything. Danny can see and hear, and uh, Danny can create what Danny wants to create, and that that is Danny. Mm -hmm. Talison very cleanly gets that point. Here's our next statement. This is a fan submitted question. This comes to us from a viewer. Um, this one is from the Littlest Jam. Thank you, the Littlest Jam, mm -hmm. for submitting uh, this statement. At the end of the first season of Hunter x Hunter, the protagonist Gon and his three friends, Leorio, Kurapika, and Kalua, pass the required exam to become certified hunters, a profession where members hunt down interesting animals, treasure, and people. Uh, Brennan has buzzed in. Um, actually, the user who submitted this is not the littlest jam. There are <laughs> way littler jams out there, and uh, I'll bet that they're somewhere in the medium spectrum of jams. It was a jelly. It's really a jelly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Is it a preserve? Is it a jelly? <laughs> a marmalade? A medium-sized preserve? Uh, no, um, as far as I know from my research, which is uh, getting this question in and looking at it, uh, they are, in fact, the littlest <laughs> jam. Um, um, Abria, you've buzzed in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, actually, isn't it Hunter x Hunter? Damn, like, so it's up damn. top. Damn. It is it is spelled Hunter x Hunter. There seems to be a dispute as far as I can tell whether it's pronounced Hunter Hunter or Hunter x Hunter. As far as I can tell, the the most correct pronunciation is Hunter Hunter, but many people ah. do say Hunter x Hunter, but it's not incorrect to say it. Uh, right. Taliesin. Um, actually, it wasn't at the end of the first season. Uh, no, no, that's incorrect. Um, hmm. 
it's too broad, but there's a kernel of truth in there. Um, can, can I can I can I make a stab a little further? Yeah, if you're able to get more specific in a more correct way, I'll count it. And if sure. you get farther away, I'm gonna I'm gonna say no. <laughs> um, actually, they don't actually pass at the end of the first season. It's later on. You are getting a little closer, so I'll 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 be I'll be a generous god. I'll give you the point for this one. Gone and two of his friends uh, do pass at the end of the first uh, of the first season. Oh. One of his friends doesn't pass uh, and has to go back and take I don't it again know if in a I later that season. Point. I don't know okay. if I deserve that point. Take you know the what? point, Talison. Let me say this, Talison. Yeah. I will not extend this same courtesy to you. <laughs> Taking the point. I, Taking the point. When I get my dirty point, I will be keeping my dirty points. So let us not let us not have a double standard here. <laughs> no point asked, uh, none given. I'll take the point. <laughs> great. So we'll allow that. We'll get that point to you. And we'll move on to our first shiny question of the game. Shiny questions. Of course, like shiny Pokemon, just a little bit different, a little bit rare, worth the same amount. This is a game we're calling We're Not So Different, You and I. Just a second, I'm going to show you six different characters from across media that all have something in common. Whoever can tell me what that thing is will get the point. Let's take a look at those characters. What do all these things have in common? Talison has buzzed in. Um, actually, they all go to uh, they all go to space. Uh, that is not what we're looking for. No, no. no. Uh, Brennan. Visser three, Arthur Dent, Venom, Jesse Attack. So I only recognize Got some it. of these. Uh, all of these are uh, symbiotic creatures. That is oh, correct. Right all of these, it. yeah. <sighs> all of these characters uh, have a symbiotic or parasitic relationship that they are engaged with. I forget how what it is. There's like a certain percentage of all organisms that is the other organisms living in them. Mm -hmm. Like, the, like the, the terms like the the helpful bacteria we have living in us. And there's also some stuff about like mitochondria that mitochondria are like not quite us mm -hmm. like they have a different yes. genetic structure a lot of biologists like think that they're that a parasitic species outnumber free living species by like four to one or something like that even though we think of it as being like oh we're mostly just getting around and there's a couple little parasites around it's like nah not really it's a pretty successful I, strategy and lots of things do it i love my little eyebrow eyebrow uh Eyebrow parasites. Those are the best. <laughs> All the things that live in your eyebrows. It's, like, it's great. Oh, yeah. Cool. I'm well, gonna. Be it's a, it's a, should we stop talking, yeah. Abria? <laughs> yeah. Forever. No, this is this is fine for me. You could make an argument that there is a moral direction for our species to move in, mm -hmm. where because isn't the thing we're trying to do with our with our relationship to our planet we want to move from a predatory relationship to a parasitic relationship with a predator you actually eliminate the organism that you have to feed on and parasites in a weird way are actually like no man hang out and do your thing i'll just be here drinking your blood <laughs> i wish only the best for you i hope you have a great day look if you die i die so like go with god this is great you know? <laughs> maybe parasites get a bad rap <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, here is our next statement. With the release of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there are 10 playable Pokemon, including Incineroar, Lucario, and Pichu, but only nine characters from Mario games, including Dr. Mario, Waluigi, and Rosalina and Luma. Uh, Talison. Um, actually, Dr. Mario isn't a playable character? Dr. Mario is a playable character. Brennan. I should know this. Um, actually, Waluigi is not playable in Super Smash Bros. That is correct. Uh, even with this this latest thing, uh, there was a, a a big uproar. Uh, you couldn't play as Waluigi. He shows up. He kind of like, uh, you know, he's a he can kind of appear, but not as a playable character. Which it, come, justice for Waluigi, I think, is is what I'm saying. Here, here. I, I would have played as Waluigi. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know why Nintendo hates this dude so. M it's like they made they made this dude. Because they for, they made Wii Sports or they made Mario Sports and like forgot how tennis worked and were like, oh shit, Wario needs a buddy. And then he blows up. People are obsessed with this gangly, strange guy. And I feel like Nintendo hates him because he's so popular and they like don't put him in nearly as much stuff <laughs> as people would be willing to accept him. I feel like Nintendo knows that like the love of him is wrong. 
And they're like, you yeah, won't. I think you're right. You don't like him right, so you can't have him. You don't like him right. You don't love I... him like we do. You can't Abria, have him. truly, there should be a hot key on keyboards for you don't like this right the, on, the, on the internet. I would break that button. I think you have a point there, Abria, because like, I do think that a lot of the love for Waluigi uh, uh, is is like, who's this fucking scumbag? <laughs> yeah. His official bio is like bizarre. And I swear to God, his bio reads like the fucking Dr. Evil monologue from Austin Powers. <laughs> where it's like, it's like, Waluigi was filled with ennui in his youth and made meat helmets. And you're like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's like such a weird, I forget exactly what it says, but it's a very strange, oh. Waluigi gets deep and they didn't know what to do with him. I totally agree. My parents were so like anti video game. I had like a single Game Boy with just Super Mario, six golden coins and Tetris. So like my big stunt would be like, oh shit, the long block from Tetris is in the game now. Let's <laughs> fucking go. That would be incredible. I would do That's anything to play with Abria. And I'm like, I'm there as like Bowser or whatever. Like, here we go. And just blocks start raining from the top of the smash. <laughs> like, this is my time. Shit. It's so funny to like ascribe character to to like the long block from Tetris because it does kind of have a character. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's like you're there in my time of need. We're gonna be be okay. Oh, long block is here. Thank you, long block. Get that stupid reverse squiggly out of here. He's fucking shit up every single time. You're just a troublemaker, reverse squiggly. Get long block. <laughs> well, we will move on to our next statement here. In the 1981 movie Scanners, there are 247 people with dangerous telepathic and telekinetic abilities known as scanners. It is eventually revealed that the source of this power is the drug ephemeral, which was developed specifically to usher in the next stage of human evolution. Uh, you've all buzzed in, uh, Abria. Um, actually, uh, ephemeral wasn't made initially to uh, usher the next stage of human evolution. It was just a beaut like a side effect that like drug addicts were using and I don't know. I just, That's yeah. close enough. I'm actually going to give you the point oh for that. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Ephemeral was not designed to uh, specifically to develop these psychic powers. It was just a side effect. Uh, it wasn't like a, a sort of like get high drug. It was a drug that was initially developed uh, as a sedative for pregnant women. Uh, and it was their children who were born uh, with these uh, with these crazy psychic powers. Wow. I feel like Scanners is most well known now as as in only GIF form. If you've ever seen the GIF of the guy's head exploding, like the the, yeah. the news person at the desk, that is from the movie Scanners. But before it was a GIF, it was a movie, I promise. <laughs> I feel like I watched 11 minutes of this on like sci-fi as I was like mm, that gaming right. for something. So I don't, oh, I don't yeah. have enough information and vodka was soon introduced, so. <laughs> I almost corrected it to the plot of Videodrone. So that's where I was like, I was, um, actually it was a VHS tape. No, no, oh no, save me. <laughs> Abria will get that point. We'll move on to our next statement here. In Adventure Time, the Earl of Lemongrab was the oldest child of King Lemongrab and heir to the Candy Kingdom. After he and his clone Lemongrab 2 exploded, Princess Bubblegum sewed the two entities back together to create Lemongrab 3. Uh, Abria. Um, actually, did she sew them together? I, I feel like I'm constructing a memory here. Didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't Lemongrab like eat the other one? You know, I I think I, I you may not be wrong there. I think that she but I, may but not be wrong about the guy getting <laughs> bored by himself. I because how ambiguous could this thing be? <laughs> I I think that might be like a different moment. Uh, this, that is the, from what we're describing here. So uh, you know, uh, scholars, have, we don't know. It looked like from one angle, it looked like he was eating himself. From another angle, it looked like he was being sewed together. So it's hard to say. I can't say whether or not that moment ever happens in the show but the moment I am describing does. Uh, so okay. um, that, that is that. Uh, Brennan. Um, actually, Lemon Grab was never actually going, it was never heir to the Candy Kingdom. That is correct. That is correct. I was trying to, I was thinking through things. There's, there's sort of like a double thing in that sentence. Uh, either one would have been fine. There is no King Lemon Grab. Uh, the Earl of Lemon Grab is not the child of anyone. The Earl of Lemon Grab was created by Princess Bubblegum in a weird science yeah. experiment. I think the Earl of Lemon Grab might be next in order of succession after Princess Bubblegum. Um, I, I, we might need to check on that. There's three Lemon Grabs. Yes. Um, it, it starts getting really crazy, but there is a Lemon Grab that eats the other Lemon Grab. 
thank you. <laughs> I am fine with not getting the point as long as I didn't make up a nightmare in my own yeah. brain and then give it to you. Just like watching Adventure Time as you drift off and it's like, now I'm going to go on my own adventure. Yeah. I'll write my own thing That's in my head. Cool. That point will go to Brennan. We'll move right along to our next question, which is our second shiny question of the game. Our second Ooh. shiny question. And this is a game we're calling, So Where Are You From? Just a moment, I'm going to show you six different characters from other planets. I want you to tell me what planet they come from. So not the media they come from, but the planet itself. Whoever can get the most will get the point. Let's take a look at our first character. Oh, shit. Oh, Brennan and Abria both buzzing very quickly, but it is Brennan <laughs> first. Uh, uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, actually, this is a very, very tricky question. Uh, from, especially given like place of birth doesn't necessarily constitute place you are from. Mm -hmm. uh, but we find her on Jakku, right? Yeah, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for Jakku. Okay. Uh, you know, look, hey, where are you from? You're probably going to answer where you grew up most of your life. You're not necessarily going to say uh, the place you're born if you don't remember it. We'll give that one to Brennan. Uh, let's look at our next one. Uh, okay, everyone's buzzing in. Brennan. Sorry, gang. I'm actually Gallifrey. Ah. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, everyone's buzzing. Everyone was ready for that one. But old Fast Fingers Mulligan over here, uh, hot on the buzzer. That is what they call him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at our next character. Uh, Brennan. Um, oh, shit. I'm actually the, fuck, the opposite of Azeroth, the, the, the Horde, <laughs> the home world of the Horde. Not Azeroth, mm -hmm. other other place. I'm so Na Nazareth, Nazareth. This is Jesus <laughs> of Nazareth. <laughs> yes. uh, no, of no, Nazareth. that is, that is the, long, the long block is Jesus of Nazareth. We've already established yeah, this. Yeah, we did uh, this earlier. <laughs> uh, you're, on, you're, you're in the right zone, but you don't have the right name, so I'm not going to give you the point oh. for that. Um, oh, Abria. shit, no, no, hi, fuck. Okay, <laughs> if, if no one else gets it, I'll get it. It'll come back okay. around at the end. Okay. Girl, Abria. I was going to guess Azeroth, so go ahead. I haven't played in so I had to quit. I had to quit so long ago. I got nothing. I guess nothing. Okay. Brennan, yes. Okay. All right, Mulligan, go deep. You're at the computer lab. It is 1997. You are next to the Dunkin' Donuts. You are playing World of Warcraft. Your brother is beating your ass. Uh, uh, the name of the demon is killed Jaden, and the name of the world is Draenor? It is Draenor, yes. That yeah, is that baby. is what I was looking for. Oh, uh, that is that. Um, I'm not even wow. mad. That was amazing. <laughs> that was impressive. We've got three more. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, Brennan, you've buzzed oh, it again. Fuck. I, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pass this one because I know I I know it's Starship Troopers, but I don't mm -hmm. know I don't know the world. Pass. Okay, uh, Talison, you buzzed in. Oh god, the Andromeda Galaxy. I ah. Oh. Nope, that's not what we're looking for either. Uh, Abria. I'm guessing my forehead because I don't know, and I'm still thinking <laughs> about stuff we talked about. These earlier. are all the parasites that crawl across yep. the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, no, that's not what we're looking for. You're right that it is from Starship Troopers. The planet I was looking for was Glendatu. Uh, uh, I never would have gotten there. God. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Uh, no, movie. none for that one. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, Abria. It's a, it's a trick. Um, okay, she's. This is a trick question because the planet she's on, she's one of the like first ones that's from a different world. Adora in the show is from like the negative zone. Etheria. Oh, uh, you're so close. You're so close. That's oh, crap. not what we're looking for, though. No. Uh, Talison, do you know? No, I'm. I. I saw okay. this as an adult, so I have no recall. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, it's not giving me the other one that you gave me, but it is saying online it's actually Etheria. Oh, interesting. Hey. Um, let's count that then. Um, I had Eternia. Is that a different? Is that from the original? It's giving Shira, us or is that two, from... but I think the photo that you're giving us is from that show. It's Etheria. Um, Got it. Okay, so we will count that then. Etheria. That will that will work just fine. Uh, Abria, that point will go to you. 
and let's take a look at uh, our last one here. Last character. Uh, Abria, you've buzzed in, but you look ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so excited that I knew what game this was from, and I'm still going to the locations. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to say Gertopia. No, that is not what yeah. we're looking for. Uh, Talison. Mandathu. Finally. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Got it. Game over. It's Nailed just it. the other side of the planet. It's crazy to assume there's only one species <laughs> per planet. Of course, you just have to travel around a little bit. Um, Brennan. Uh, hey, I don't have an answer, but it's crazy how many people want to fuck this guy. He, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's just a huge... I, I have not never played this game, and I've never heard this guy talk, and I know that he is thirsted after online in a really potent <laughs> way. Done for that one. This was a kind of deep cut, um, but this is uh, a Plavin or Plavin. I'm not even sure how it's pronounced, um, but that is the uh, the uh, planet we're looking for. Uh, Brennan, you got three of those. Abria, you got one. Um, so that point will go to Brennan. Okay, okay. We'll move right along. We're back to our regular old, um, actually, preceded questions here. The sixth season of Supernatural featured an episode called The French Mistake, in which the angel Balthazar sends Sam and Dean to an alternate reality where there is no magic, no supernatural events, and Sam and Dean aren't brothers, but are instead co-workers at an accounting firm. Uh, Brennan. Uh, um, actually, um... This didn't happen in season six, but it did happen in, uh, this, did, hasn't this show been on for like 30 years or something? This show's been on for forever, uh, like, uh, but as far, but this did happen in season six. Uh, but it has been on for a very, very long time. Uh, Abria. Um, actually, uh, they're not accountants. They go back and they're in the Wild West because this is a reference to Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. There's a lot very right here. So, Abri, I'm going to give you the point, unless someone can be more specific. You are correct. They're not accountants. And you are correct that this is a reference to Blazing Saddles, but it's not that they're in a Western. So I'll give you the point, unless Talison or Brennan can throw a Hail Mary and know specifically <laughs> what it is that they are, if not accountants. Um, Actually, they're background dancers? No. In the musical? Okay, that was all I had. That's a good guess. <laughs> uh, Brennan, you have a stab or are you going to seed? I will seed. I don't have a stab. All right, Abria, that point will go to you. Uh, in in a bit of just meta craziness, which is the main reason I wanted to talk about this, um, they don't go to an old Western. They, in fact, go to our universe where uh, they uh, basically meet themselves who are themselves the actors. And they're like, isn't it crazy they're not brothers? They're actors in a show called Supernatural that is currently in its sixth season. And yeah, it is that Blazing Saddles thing of like, yep. oh, there's a show within a show. That happened just, in season six? I've always, <laughs> I've always just assumed this wasn't a show. It was just a branded Hot Topic. Like, that's fair. Was a, do they make the show off of the stuff they sell at Hot Topic? Like, what, that's my question is like, you ran out of gas to that degree six seasons in? And then did continued someone, for 11 more seasons. Yeah, like what's the deal? Did someone like put a bomb in the chest of the showrunner? And it's like, if you don't make two seasons a year, the bomb goes off. It's like the emo kids Power Rangers that just keeps going. And yeah. Going. <laughs> well, that point goes to Abria. Uh, for identifying most of that Solid. meta bit of a television that was the French mistake. Uh, and here's our next statement. The seventh Oz book, The Patchwork Girl of Oz, introduces Bungle, a glass cat brought to life by Dr. Pipt. Bungle is completely transparent, except for her red heart, emerald eyes, and pink brains. Bungle is at first aloof and conceited, but becomes more agreeable after the wizard gives her a stethoscope to hear the hearts of others. Uh, Brennan. Um, actually, uh, she stays aloof and conceited. She doesn't learn her lesson. She stays the exact same way. She's like a real cat, won't listen to anything you say. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. but imagine trying to put stethoscopes on, a, on cats. You can't do that. <laughs> that would never work. Uh, Abria. Um, actually, I would like to throw some opacity on that cat somewhere. Uh, when she walks uh, in the ground, her feet get dirty. A great guess, uh, but that's not that's not correct either. Uh, Talison. Um, actually, it's to hear her own heart or they're an experimental punk band from Los Angeles. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Talison, you found uh, an area that is wrong. Um, so I'll, I'll give like a sort of scoop yes! opportunity here. It wasn't that the wizard gave her, uh, a stethoscope to hear the hearts of others. It was something else entirely. So I'll, I'll give you the point unless someone can tell me uh, what that was. Yeah, Brendan, go ahead. 
Um, actually, the Wizard of Oz did not give a stethoscope so that uh, Bungle the cat could hear the hearts of others. Um, he recommended a therapist in the Emerald City. <laughs> um, learning empathy when you're fundamentally, you know, you don't get to other people because you're a glass cat with visible sure. brains, heart, and eyes. Like, that's hard. It's a struggle. And that's hard. Uh, <laughs> he just, and basically, the, what the wizard gave was like a lot of patience and understanding, but also mm -hmm. like accountability and like saying, like, hey, <clears throat> you need to. You know, you, you can't be this aloof. Uh, no. Uh, uh, sorry to say, no. Um, uh, Abria. I'm actually, the the wizard put, you know, whatever that coating is on gl on glass on cars. It's like safety check. glass. So it's like, yeah, it's like it's dipped safety in the, glass yeah. now. A great guess. Uh, no, no for both of those. Um, actually, it was a scamp, a scalpel to see the hearts of others. Excuse Ooh. me. <laughs> I, I mean, Talison and Brennan, like you're, you're sort Sorry. of dancing around like weirdness, which is that like uh, in very different ways though. Brennan, you started going down this like medical route, but you went a very like empathetic, uh, current uh, uh, medical route of like, well, of course you want therapy. Uh, in point of fact, the uh, the wizard replaced Bungle's brains, those visible pink brains that we saw, uh, replaced them with uh, clear glass brains, essentially lobotomized Bungle the hey. cat to make Bungle much more agreeable and less aloof, which is some oh dark, my God. dark I, shit. I saw Return to Oz, I know how this uh, goes. Oh my God. If you thought the darkness ended at Wheeler's, it keeps going. Oh, the head closet ruined me for life. The I head closet for sure. Well, Talison, uh, you'll you'll sneak that in there and uh, we yeah. all learn a little something about the darkness of the later Oz books. This brings us to our last shiny question. Last shiny question. This is a game that we call What's Wrong With This Picture? Just a moment, I'm gonna show you an image that we have altered in some way. The first person who can tell me what is wrong with this image will get the point. Let's take a look at this image. What's wrong with this? Talison. Uh, I know I'm wrong about this, but the Y is wrong in the PlayStation logo. Oh, well, that's an interesting guess. Uh, no, that's it's, not what we're looking for. Abria. Um, actually, the the little scary sad man near the A doesn't have his mouth, and I would like him to, because he needs to scream. <laughs> that is not something we've changed about this image, so wrong though it may be, it is not what we have made wrong. Uh, Brennan. I'm gonna go ahead and just say that that face is not from this property. The, the face that is that is in these images is not actually from the original Alone in the Dark game. Brennan, you are correct uh, in oh, that yeah. this title for this video game does not go with this box art. Uh, they're, they're two different things. So I'll give you the point, unless anyone can hail Mary this and tell me what game this is the art for. Uh, Talis, you want to take a first guess here? Uh, Marble Madness, The New Nightmare. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, Abria. Shot in the dark. Uh, uh, you know what? The The oft remarked upon are you afraid of the dark video game uh no that is incorrect either uh talison shockingly not that far off uh this was a weird alternate art to bust a move you remember bust a what? move the cute what? little the game living. where what? you just shoot little bubbles up and you try to match three in a row so so the, the thing that's up on the screen now that's yes. unaltered. That's that is real. the original <laughs> image. That go is... and go and <laughs> fuck yourself. Yeah, this is <laughs> why my parents didn't let me play video games. <laughs> this is the thing. And this they is, were right, I think. Well, these are all the correct reactions to have. It's absolutely insane. I love like Neo Geo. Like I love the, the sort of like the busted move. I love that. And if I saw this in the game store, I would've been like, this is not the game for me. That's a bit too intense for, for old 10 year old trap. What is the actual gameplay of bust move? Like what does one do in bust move? It is the most delightful, like bubblegum candy, child-friendly game out there. It's It's got a catchy little song that plays. You play as two little dinosaurs at the bottom. You've got a stash of bubbles and you're just launching them up. It's it's like Snood, it's the, it's the original Snood. It is could not be farther from what this box art is. I, I feel like I can feel those toothpicks, like <laughs> such a, like an, a visceral, unpleasant <laughs> image to look at. It reminds me of like those Eastern European movie posters where they only got the title of the movie. And then like, you've seen these things like where it's yep. just like, where it's like trading places and it's a dinosaur and a crown with like a human next to it. And you're like, 
Brennan will take that point for identifying it was the wrong ass game. And um, we will move on to our last question of the game. The last question, as always, concerns real life skills. You may love to swim, but remember to keep yourself safe. If you're outside, wear sunblock of at least SPF 30. Don't go swimming within 30 minutes of eating. And if you're going to dive, be sure the depth is at least eight feet. Uh, Brennan. Um, actually, that sunscreen thing is very subjective, number one. <laughs> number two, um, actually, uh, the, it's a myth. The eating, the eating 30 minutes before is a myth. That is correct. That is a, that is a myth. Yeah. That is a sort of urban legend. Yeah. Uh, there's no uh, evidence to, to suggest that you have to wait after eating. Uh, the closest thing that you can come across is like, it's like, oh, there's some scientific evidence that you shouldn't be flat out drunk while you're swimming uh, for obvious <laughs> reasons. Uh, but uh, unless you're drinking lots of booze, don't worry about the food you're eating. Uh, uh, that's, that's not necessarily a thing you have to worry about. I feel like uh, I can refute that other statement too. It's yeah, fine. <laughs> it's fine. I've done it. It's fine. I, I actually think I swim better when I'm drunk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that uh, that was Woo! our final question. Great. I feel, I feel uh, okay about that. I feel okay honestly, about that. Uh, you know what? I'll take it. Brennan, of course, continues to be the villain of the series. <laughs> Seven points. He's put them away in his little point hoard, and he sleeps on them like a dragon at night. <laughs> That is our episode. Uh, thank you all for playing with me today, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually.